The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is without a doubt one of the biggest games Nintendo has released recently. The huge sense of adventure, unique characters, and freedom that the player has makes it a very special experience. However, throughout the game there are several hidden details that help flesh out the story more, and those small pieces of information scattered across Hyrule can be easily missed. Because of this, many questions regarding the story will stay unanswered because they are missing the last vital piece to the puzzle. While there are a lot of different topics to debate about in this massive game, I'll be focusing on one surrounding a very specific character, Zelda. For those unfamiliar with who Zelda is, she's this girl right here. And she has a really nice personality. Throughout the game, the player finds out through memories and other people in the land that 100 years ago, she had contained the power to seal the calamity and save the kingdom from the evident destruction. However, she was unable to unlock her power within her time, which resulted in the Great Calamity, which put Hyrule in ruin. Before her unavoidable clash with Ganon, she was able to harness her power in a last minute effort to protect the hero, this guy right here, and put him into his sleep for 100 years and hope that he may one day defeat the evil and save Hyrule. Pretty epic if I do say so myself. Now, the real question is this. Exactly what was it that awakened this power? Why, after all this time of failing, would she suddenly be able to harness it before it was too late? Well, it's simple. She found something, or someone, to fight for and protect. And who else than our lovable silent knight, the hero, Link himself? Now, there are a lot of memories and hints here and there that imply this. I believe the first thing to do is to take a look at Zelda as a character. I think it's safe to say that Zelda is one of the most complicated characters to understand in Breath of the Wild. Heck, I would even go on and say that she is the most developed one in the series as a whole. So because of that, I will be looking at all the hints within the game and explain how this princess has the hots for her own appointed lucky knight. Now obviously with a game this massive and with this much detail, to make sense out of the whole thing, we need to start at the very beginning. More specifically, her diary. When the player goes to Hyrule Castle, if you go into Zelda's room, you will find a diary that belongs to her. In the first entry, she talks about how she met the champions and went to research the ancient technology. And below that, she wrote, P.S. Tomorrow, my father is assigning him as my appointed knight. End quote. Doesn't sound like she's really fond of Link, does she? And then if we go to the first memory, during the Ceremony of Legend, we hear Ravioli say that he felt the same way as a princess regarding Link. Huh? What's that? Hold on, guys, just a second. Yeah? Uh-huh. Oh, wait. Is it? Oh. So, apparently this guy's name is actually Ravali? But... I'm still gonna call him Ravioli because I can. Anyways, throughout the memories you obtain, you find out that Ravioli actually doesn't like Link. Because of this, we're able to conclude that Zelda didn't really like him either at first. The princess also brings up the fact that Link remains silent most of the time when heading to Grand City. She goes even as far as to say this in her diary. And still, not a word passes his lips. I never know what he's thinking. It makes my imagination run wild, guessing at what he is thinking but will not say. What is the boy chosen by the sword that seals the darkness think of me? Will I ever truly know? Then I suppose it's simple. A daughter of Hyrule's royal family yet unable to use sealing magic. He must despise me. Zelda even gets angry at Link for accompanying her later on, and yells at him. Then she writes in her diary, He seemed confused by my anger. At this point, I believe that Zelda begins to realize that her initial impressions of Link were completely wrong. Enter the next memory, where Zelda is about to be killed by the Iga Clan and Link comes to her aid, saving her. I don't know about you guys, but that right there looks like the face of someone starting to fall for the rescuer. Zelda even writes about it in her journal. This is pretty long, but it really shows how her viewpoint of him starts to change completely. She states, I am unsure of how to put today's events into words. Words so often evade me lately, and now more than ever, he saved me. Without a thought for his own life, he protected me from the ruthless blades of the Yiga clan. Though I've been cold to him all this time, taking my selfish and childish anger out on him at every turn. Still, he was there for me. I won't ever forget that. Tomorrow, I shall apologize for all that has transpired between us. And then, I will try talking to him. To Link, it's worth a shot. This diary entry actually makes a lot of sense, because she even begins to worry for his safety, as she scolds him for being too reckless after defeating several strong enemies atop Death Mountain. 
As brave as you are, that does not make you immortal. Zelda begins to care for Link, and shows concern for his well-being. And then, one of the most important entries in her diary. Bit by bit, I've gotten Link to open up to me. When I finally got around asking why he's so quiet all the time, I could tell it was difficult for him to say. But he did. With so much at stake, and so many eyes upon him, he feels it necessary to stay strong and to silently bear any burden. A feeling I know all too well. For him, it has caused him to stop outwardly expressing his thoughts and feelings. I always believed him to be a simply gifted person who had never faced a day of hardship. How wrong I was. And then the final few sentences. I wish to talk with him more, and to see what lies beneath those calm waters. To hear him speak freely and openly. And perhaps I, too, will be able to bear my soul to him and share the demons that have plagued me all these years. So the very important part about this quote- wait. Wait a minute. What? Link can talk? Huh. Well, what do you know? That's interesting. Now, the part that we're interested in is the last bit, where she talks about how someday she will be able to bear her soul to him. I took a look at the meaning of that, and it means to tell someone your secret thoughts and feelings. This entire time, Zelda has been pretending to be the person that her father wants her to be, and doing whatever is required of her. She's tried to open up to him before, which is shown when she is scolded by her father after taking a break from training to research more technology. Instead of acting as a father, he talks to her as a king and orders Zelda to dedicate her whole life to training. If we go to the king's journal entries, we can even see that he states, The reason her sacred powers still won't awaken is because she's spending all of her efforts playing at being a scholar. Zelda has gone her entire life feeling pressured to do what she is told, and because she isn't able to open up to anyone, and doesn't have a real reason to unlock the power within her other than to do what her father tells her, she isn't able to receive this power. Fast forward through several memories, and we find out that after many unsuccessful attempts when training at the Spring of Power and Courage, Zelda says that she will be heading up to Mount Lanaru to the Spring of Wisdom in a final attempt to awaken the power within her. This, of course, ends in failure, and she is comforted by the champions. Now this is where things get very interesting. When Zelda is feeling discouraged, Mifa, the Zora champion, says something to try and help her. If I may... I thought you... well, I'm not sure how to put this into words. I'm actually quite embarrassed to say it. But I was thinking about what I do when I'm healing. You know, what usually goes through my mind. It helps when I think... when I think about... Unfortunately, she's not able to finish her sentence because Calamity Ganon awakes. But what is implied here is very interesting. If you haven't played Breath of the Wild, Mifa is in love with Link. This is proven when she makes Zora armor for him, something that Zora do for the person they want to marry. Heck, many of the Zora actually talk about this in the game. Now, Mifa admitted what she was going to say was kind of embarrassing, so it's heavily implied that she was going to say something along the lines of, it helps me when I think about the person I deeply care about, or love. Fast forward to the second last memory, where Zelda and Link are surrounded by guardians. She begs him to leave her and save himself. However, being the loyal knight, he stays and prepares to protect the princess with his last breath. Breath of the wild, that is. You guys see what I did there? Okay, I'll stop now. Just when the guardian is about to fire at him, Zelda is able to finally use her stealing power and save both of them. Finally, he's sent to the Shrine of Resurrection where he's put to sleep for 100 years. So, what happened here? Doesn't make any sense, or perhaps it does. Instead of trying to unlock her power just because she was ordered by the king, she had a reason to do it. Now even though we don't know what Mifa actually was going to say, this memory definitely makes it a possibility. I'm sure this is kind of far-fetched and hard to believe for some people, and none of this is solid evidence, but don't worry, I have more. In the final memory where Zelda sets the Master Sword back in the stone, she has a talk with the Deku Tree and makes a request. Great Deku Tree, I ask of you, when he returns, can you please relay this message? Tell him I- Now then, words intended for him would sound much better in the tones of your voice, don't you think? Yes. Of course, we never get to hear what those words are. But to me, this is the last detail that proves it. Zelda didn't have a reason to find power within her. But when she found a reason to protect the person she deeply cared about, she was finally able to accept who she was and in the end, save Hyrule.
And that was it. I thought I was done. That that was all there was to be found. That it would all remain as just a theory, with no solid evidence. Until I played the game again, and found this. Solid evidence that proves she was in love with Link. And that was... Cass! I don't really think there was a need for dramatic music, but... Okay. Now, there's a high chance that everyone who's played Breath of the Wild knows about Cass. Throughout Hyrule, you will speak to him at specific locations, and he will teach you different songs that you need to solve several puzzles throughout the game. But did you guys know that there is a final song? One that is only accessible after you solve all the other ones found in the game. If the player goes to Rito Village, you will find him, and if you talk to him at night, Cass will talk to you about how his teacher was of the Sheikah tribe and was in love with the princess, better known as Zelda. However, the princess herself, and I quote, only had eyes for escort, her own knight attendant. This is it. The only piece of evidence that I need to prove that Zelda of Hyrule is in love with the one appointed to protect her, Link. Oh, but I am not done here, guys. You might be saying that this doesn't prove it was love that awakened Zelda's power. Well, we can find the answer to that question in the lyrics of the final song. An ancient hero, a calamity appears. Now resurrected after 10,000 years. Her appointed knight gives his life, shields her figure, and pays the price. The princess's love for her fallen knight awakens her power, and within the castle, the calamity is forced to cower. Checkmate. That's the piece of evidence that proves all of this. Zelda's struggle to awaken her power, her love for Link, it's all here in the final confrontation with Cass. So now you all can rest easy, knowing the truth of this whole mystery. Breath of the Wild is already a pretty fantastic game, but it just got a whole lot greater. But now that I think about it, could Zelda have already had affection for Link? I mean, obviously she would fall for him at the last moments because he's protecting her, but according to the diary, it looks like she already was in love with him. And if it really was love that activated her power, shouldn't she have been able to seal Ganon and save Hyrule? Wait a minute. What if she purposely didn't stop Calamity Ganon? Then that way, Waifu Fish would have been killed, and therefore would have taken away her competition for Link. Is... Zelda a Yandere? No. No, I'm thinking- I'm thinking way too far into this. Or... Am I?